By the end of this video, you're going to know every single thing you need to know about what is heavy and what is not for a head mounted display, aka an HMD, whether it be a spatial computer or some type of XR system that does VR, AR, or a combination thereof. These photos are my own of the, of the HTC Vive original and my index, one of my most precious HMDs. I have purposely only just wiped them down. I wanted to show them in their kind of battle state after a lot of wear and tear and showing how they held up. That was part of my discussion. And don't worry, I'm going to go into Vision Pro and talk about both types of straps that come with the device. So yes, this is going somewhere, I promise. And your investment, if you decide to purchase one of these systems, being the Vision Pro, you will be well versed in exactly what you're getting into. And then, as I always advocate, you get to make your own decisions. Now, let's start with the HTC Vive. The HTC Vive is a much older system than the index on the right. And one of the things that's very interesting about the HTC Vive is that it came with a deluxe audio strap. I quickly procured that and you can see it mounted to the headset and in different directions. And what you'll note is that it has the same upper strap that goes over the top of the head from the front to the back. That has drawbacks and benefits. In particular, there is a single point of failure on this system, right where the, um, the front strap mounts in. And sometimes you can get your hair caught in this style of catchment, but both the Index and the HTC Vive kind of have that issue, although it is extraordinarily rare. And it's usually if you're going to have multiple users and then you put it on and you're trying to quickly adjust it or something while you're setting up, that kind of can impact you. As a reminder, with VR headsets like these in front of you, there is a cord and there's also a way, method of detecting whether you have the headset on or off. So if you take the headset off to adjust it, it takes the screens offline or it puts the, starts putting on the timeout. It also can throw your tracking off where your character is physically like leaning downwards and other things and it can create a whole host of issues. In your hands, you have controllers. So they may be on um, lanyards, so they can hang off of your hands while you're adjusting things. But still, remember, that's all tracking that might have to be redone. When you get into full body tracking, where you have the trackers on your legs and your waist, it becomes even more problematic, where you have to T-pose to build yourself back out again so it can start tracking in. Sometimes it doesn't work. You have to try multiple times, especially when you get to the more advanced stuff like full body tracking. But back to what we're talking about here. If we ignore the obvious, there's a cord hanging off of these uh, that has a few more things other than just power, where the Apple Vision Pro enjoys having a simpler power delivery system, maybe some data in there, but it's not trying to fit a full display port or in the case of the Vive, an HDMI cable with, with everything running through it. It's like a multi, these both have multi cables that adds a tiny bit of weight. Uh, the design is, is mainly in the back just for audio on both systems. Now on the HTC Vive specifically, the headset is enclosed to the side of your ears. It will actually cap up and it does produce a decent bit of sweat when you're trying to do gameplay that's high speed, low drag. Like if you're trying to do a higher difficulty of Beat Saber, for example, you really get to a point where you almost put the headset pieces to the side because the music's loud enough. And if you look in this shot here through the glass, so it's a little distorted, but you can clearly see a lot of the wiring, a lot of the headset pieces from the deluxe audio strap combination that really just kind of take over the space. Um, so the Vive, all those wires for the most part aren't hitting you. Um, unless you keep swinging your head around, like say in a high speed maneuvers type game, whether it be an FPF like FPS, like Pavlov or onward, uh, or if you're doing some type of exercise type game, like Beat Saber, um, you, you really start feeling a lot of this hardware swinging around. So the cleaner design of the index is, is much better for that type of environment. 
and then even better than the indexes in some I would argue in some ways, we still have to test it, is the Vision Pro's design where it integrates most of the connections into the actual white plastic sides of the device. So those 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 side pieces that kind of click in, uh, they have little feeds in there for the power and the, uh, for the power distribution and for the audio, and that's it. Now, in the future, interestingly, uh, Apple patented recently a whole slew of other connections on a more sophisticated connection. It's highly suggestible that that may in the future become a situation where things like EKG and other kinds of sensors of all different types of health readings and health heart rates detection and um, all sorts of other interesting type of sensors could be added to the strap uh, effortlessly essentially if because it's inside the casement but that means there's even more stuff that can get busted can go wrong the cost of the actual straps can go up because all those sensors have to be in there and they can once again if one of them goes wrong and that's something important to you like an exercise type thing uh, that's something to, to be playing around and of course if the strap is not comfortable and able to use exercise in an exercise environment well then it, none of this is it's a moot point if it's not comfortable to use, you're not going to use it that often. And if it can't get rid of the sweat and the other uh, environment, like the high humidity that ends up inside the headset, you're going to run the risk of damaging your headset over time uh, due to the sweat. Uh, so these are things that like you need to impl you need to implement and think about. And uh, there may be some solutions, uh, but in general, you have to remember that you're talking about VR versus a spatial computing system. And they're two different kinds of environments. So they're kind of like distant cousins that trace back their lineage to the same kind of concepts of an HMD and what is important because they're both on the same type of interface where they're in front of a face. and uh, But the, the actual methods of getting the job done are uh, more simplistic or more uh, intricate. And those type of things can change the design. You may note, uh, going over to the index, that the front cover that you may have seen in pictures is missing on mine. And that is because the uh, frunk, as it's called, the front trunk is the nickname for it, that that, uh, that, I, that I think, as I understand it, Valve themselves kind of threw that nickname around, <laughs> um, basically was hidden underneath that that space. It was never really thought out of what that was going to be. Like they had like, I think one little signage in there that's like Valve is great or Steam is great or Steam VR or something that was scrolled. Ironically, a screen in front of you uh, that was nowhere near as sophisticated as the very, very nice one that's in the Vision OS, the, for the Vision OS on, on the Vision Pro. But uh, what we can learn from that is uh, that uh, the additional screenage, I, I, I didn't really bother finding that adapter and working on that or figuring something else out. Additionally, there was fans that people put there, but there's no breathing. There's no actual breathing there. I took the front plastic off because it's a little bit of less weight on, on the front, a uh, very small amount to be fair. And then also it allowed for a little more breathing of the actual parts that matter. That mesh material is not speakers. That's allowing the, the screens to breathe, the, the hardware to breathe inside the HMD. And every little bit counts, especially if you're uh, moving around in these things. On a spatial computer where you're not building up as much heat, and if you're in an air-conditioned environment, it may not be as big of an issue. But if you're in a very hot climate, and if you're not always in air conditioning, or if you're taking this thing outside, it is interesting to note that those are things that the spatial computer will have to face compared to the index, which never faces going outside on the count it's literally hardwired to a computer. Both of these devices, as a reminder, are not standalone processors. They are very well built. They are built like tanks, uh, but at the end of the day, they are basically gig incredible computer accessories slash computer screens uh, that, that render out uh, content that is actually rendered on the computer itself and then is rendered to your eyes by the device. I guess it depends on which way you define that, that word I'm using. <laughs> But uh, if you look at the index's internal areas, you'll see that there's an interesting layout for the pressure 
of the straps and the actual allotment of the speakers. And the speakers are uh, off to the sides. It's called spatial audio back in the day. That's what Valve called it. And it was part of their idea of having a frictionless setup for people to just don a VR headset and just roll with it. And uh, the speakers are also meant to be that way. So it feels more like a natural audio. So this is a key interesting thing that it shares with its distant cousin, the, the Vision Pro. In that the because the speakers are not actually attached as ear earphones, ear ear attachments like the deluxe audio strap of the Vive, uh, you gain the ability to not have uh, as much buildup of sweat and other issues like that and comfort uh, uh, that the Vive dealt with, but you get you lose privacy. So that spatial audio is playing to the entire room, even though it is down firing into your ears. Um, it's never perfect. Uh, but it's good enough. And it does indeed feel like there's spatial audio. Like you can tell if a noise is coming from your front left or behind you to the back right. Um, there's multiple little speakers in there or whatever way they simulate surround sound in that environment. It's rather basic, but it works. And the sound is rather good. I have never had any complaints about either one of these having good sound. I had more complaints about trying to adjust the Vibe's uh, earbuds, especially if I have to take the headset on and off real quick, um, versus the spatial audio setup that's away from your ears on the index where you never have to adjust it. You can leave them just flopped up a little bit. And in the pictures, you'll see that like they're slightly out and a little angle doesn't really matter. Uh, they're good enough. And it's, it's more than loud enough. Uh, so... Uh, if we're sticking just to the straps, I want to give another nod to the Vision Pro for going with spatial audio and to support the spatial computing aspects of it and give that more uh, immersive experience and have that, you know, once again, following that philosophy of frictionless use where you don't have to worry about the attachments. And you can still get the AirPod Pros uh, 2s with the USB-C cable, uh, USB-C charging um, to be able to enjoy uh, near lossless uh, audio that is actually private. So if you're flying on a plane or sitting on a bus, as I understand it, something like that, we're going to have to test it. But that's the idea that you won't have to disrupt people if you're listening to, you know, Die Hard movie or Gattaca or whatever your favorite movie is, um, you know, whatever it is. And uh, you have that environment where you, you, you're you experiencing that that in a close environment and not impacting anyone else. And for what it's worth, in VR in general, if you have the luxury of having a small space that you can set aside for this, it's a good idea. And even if you're in a group, usually the people won't mind the audio because it's, they're going to be their, their turn next. Whereas the, uh, the Vision Pro in general has a specially fit gasket, a specially fit size strap, although the strap's a little more universal than, than the actual thing. And then also um, eyeglass things. So if you go and get size Opticals, which I, of course, I'm not saying don't if you, if you, if you need it, but... If you have those inserted, it's going to be interesting to see is it is it is it is it is it practical to take those out and then put them back in? Is it practical to adjust the strap and then put it back in uh, for different people? To the credit of the big strap on the back of the Vision Pro, uh, it may not look as advanced as these type of straps, but it should be much easier to get on and off. And now here comes the big Kahuna topic, though. That strap looks nothing like these, and there's a reason for that. It's more for ease of use and looks. There's one cinch down on the side that allows you to tighten it up on the back of the head. And there's a lot of theory crafting about having that sitting further up on the back of your um, on the back of your head than what most people are comfortable with. So when you wear a pair of ski goggles that you put them right above your ear, your, right above your ears, right to the back of your head. Whereas a lot of the photos that that uh, that were like official from Apple, they kept showing the strap sitting a little higher on the back of your head, and it's highly suggested that then you have to cinch it down so it's more comfortable and kind of supports the balance of weight a little better because it is front heavy. No matter any of these are front heavy, it's how they handle that front heaviness that matters. Now, it's not the only option. Right in the box, they're including the dual loop, which is what they call that strap that has the above the head and to the sides. Now, what's interesting about the dual loop is it is not an over the head um, conveyor belt style that I'll call it <laughs> that the index and that the Vive have. Instead, it goes horizontally across the top of your head. And 
it should be interesting to see how different that is because these styles, while they have that single point of failure on the top uh, on the top front, right where the plastic is that connects the HMD to the top strap, um, they are pretty reliable. They are pretty good as long as that does, as long as that piece doesn't break, um, you, you're golden. And I haven't had one break. I've heard a horror story about one person with a vibe that had one break on them. I've heard a couple online that had that issue. Uh, with their vibes over the years, but I mean, I've I've done a lot of lot of lot of hours on these and never had a problem. I may have just been very blessed, lucky, whatever you want to call it, but I don't know. Um, with the Vision Pro, you are uh, the the failure point to me is going to be those little white plastic parts that actually connect the power distribution and audio distribution from the headset into the back um, where the straps are. So the strap itself is just to support it. The actual audio distribution is on those those little white pieces on the sides, those plastic white pieces. And that's where you can see that little pod that has the audio right above where your ears would be. And you have a little slit there that put, puts the audio right at your ear, which is fine. I'm sure it'll sound great. Uh, but it's worth noting that if those pieces break, that's your like point of failure. So instead of on the top of the head, I'm most worried about, I'm most worried about the sides of your head on the Vision Pro. And I hope that doesn't become an issue. Uh, it should be interesting to see if they're, um, it seems like they kind of lock in place and then they have those connectors on the interior. And uh, once again, it's putting more emphasis on the top, uh, on the sides, I should say, and not the top. And you'll note on the Vive, that there's oh, there's like an angle effect to theirs where you can kind of move it a little bit without any issues. So again, for a moment, I want to go back to the index, comparing it to the Vision Pro and point out they're kind of closer. And that's there's probably a good reason for that. The index is a newer technology. The Vision Pro is a brand new technology that's been developed over the past couple of years. And the Vive was kind of the earlier, early generations of this technology you have more wires, more stuff that can kind of get in the way, um, whereas the index is like a refined version of that and a few different changes. Notably, you know, you can see that there's multiple pass-through cameras and some improve in incredibly good improvements to microphones. You'll note that there's some tape and some other <laughs> pieces of cloth. There's actually a, two layers of cloth, like a very thin cloth and a piece of tape holding it in place on on the on the Vive because the microphone had no basically pop filter and it was very very bad on the Vive it's a shame it was well placed but it was uh, a modification a lot of us did and mine still has it on there for over many years ago and um, that was something we all had to do was literally put a put the cloth on there two layers of cloth put the tape on there poke some holes into the tape like little tiny holes um, with a, with a pinpoint and, um, that allowed you to have that kind of, uh, sound, uh, um, pop filter. And all of a sudden it, it made the, made it sound a lot better. Whereas the index enjoyed significantly better microphones out of the box without any of that stuff. And that, and also the pass-through cameras, while they were still bad, they were much better. So for play-space optimization and setup for when you're trying to set up a chaperone system on the, on, on the move, it was much better. So it had a lot of quality of life improvements. And most importantly for this, it had a lot of ease of use things, less wires that can go wrong. Newcomers can't accidentally pull out a bunch of wiring and gut it. Uh, you'll note that the wiring is integrated into the sides of the headset, a lot like the Vision Pro. In fact, I think the Vision Pro does a better job of this because the uh, audio is that little clustered pod on the sides like we talked about. And that means it's even harder for someone to accidentally break it off or mess it up. I'm not saying that it's, I'm not saying you should let, you know, somebody throw it around the room, but at least the, the, the more um, risk adverse you have to build it, the better, especially when it's really honest mistakes. Simply handling one of these headsets the wrong way could result in you accidentally yanking a cable out. And if you don't know where to put it back in, that could create a problem, especially on the Vive with the deluxe audio strap, which was kind of like that cord, uh, cell phone cord looking, old school uh, house phone looking cord on the top 
uh, on the left side of the device if you're looking from if you're if you're wearing it or the from the right on this photograph um, so it kind of brings up an interesting point I mean like where are we I once again think that the vision pro dual loop will be the best option of the two main options but I still hope that there are actual third-party solutions as well for people who aren't happy with either option. And there may need to be sizing or one size fits all and have to figure that out because people's heads do are happen to be different sizes. But these two devices in front of you are testimony that uh, you can have an adjustable strap that can fit most people. And you simply adjust the straps and you're good to go, particularly the top and then cinch, cinch down the back and you're good. Um, on both of them, they have cinches on the back. So it, it brings up an interesting point. Uh, when I was kind of handling them just, just a few minutes ago, putting these photos together, um, it, it kind of occurred to me just how, how similar they are and about how you can absolutely see the lineage from the Vive to the Index. And while the Vision Pro, it's a little obscured and Apple has chosen to use the large single strap on the back, the big strap. Um, as their front runner, I think the, the mark of somebody who who really uses it as a power user and somebody who, who really plugs that battery in and uses it for long term as I did as an actual computer, as a spatial computer that it's meant to be, I think you'll see them rocking a dual loop. And I think that there will be really nice either Apple or third party mounts to place these things on with the dual loop sitting on there and uh, hopefully different color pathways in the future too. So I can, I can tell you that I may not have had an option, to be fair, just like with the Vision Pro. These devices only came in black at the time, although the newer Vives have a blue color for the commercial versions, for example, um, which is, I actually kind of thought was kind of neat. But I'd like to see the Vision Pro with black sides to it instead of the white plastic parts. I'd rather have black plastic parts. And I hope, I hope Apple releases a first party version of that eventually. And if they don't, I'd like to see it um, from a third party application, you say Belkin or somebody else that's like an approved vendor, uh, taking care of those sides and also a black dual loop. Um, I, I want to point this, the obvious out here. This is a device that's going to be close to, 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 uh, to you. And it's something that you, you're not going to like wear something on top of this. Like you're not going to wear like a hat and then put this on. So it gets dirty. <laughs> you have to keep it clean. And I'm not saying it gets ridiculously dirty, but white in particular, bright white is like the worst one to keep clean. Every little stain from, um, from something you're eating or drinking or something and spill or whatever is going to get all over this and it's gonna be a real pain point whereas the black straps kind of give you that wiggle room where the only thing you can really tell on these is kind of the wear and tear from the actual um strap over time kind of uh loosening it's it's strength from from years of use so that's kind of some of the thoughts I had. Uh, I hope you appreciated this kind of input. If, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you like this kind of content, give me some feedback in the comments if you think other sets are better or worse, uh, particularly the camp, the Oculus camp. Uh, I was intending to include that uh, if you saw me writing in the, the, in the subreddits uh, Discord um, for Vision Pro. Uh, but unfortunately, what ended up happening is I kind of... Uh, came up against a collab kind of thing where think just timing didn't line up and I really just wanted to um, knock this out of the park and get out what I truly enjoy doing which is commenting on these and hopefully that'll give me time to free up with the collab for the future where I can talk about some more in-depth topics that are really interesting uh, and particularly the Unity Pro licensing and is it going to hinder or 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 uh, not uh, development for many people. For those that don't know, right now you need to have a Unity Pro license, as far as I understand, uh, to develop in Unity for the Vision for the Vision OS system that runs on the Vision Pro. And hopefully that will change because that's thousands of dollars. So uh, that's what I got for now. And I wish you a wonderful Tuesday watching a lot of the videos that are coming out from the early reviews. Uh, it's going to be a very interesting roller coaster ride the next couple weeks for all of us. And uh, I'm glad we all get a front row seat. Have a good one.